Yes guys, how's everyone doing? This is Champion2D Rob back again with another video guys and this time I thought I would do a DVD and Blu-ray pickups. I very very rarely ever get to do these sorts of pickup videos because to be honest with you I don't really pick up much in the way of um, DVDs and Blu-rays uh, much anymore but lately I've been picking them up uh, just stuff that I've really wanted to watch and uh and every now and again uh you get something that comes out that you just really want to own as well so yeah um i think i will start with a box set that i picked up and this is for a series that i absolutely love and basically it is one that i've been waiting for years for like for the best part of 10 years probably more so I've been waiting for them to put this out as a box set and I'm glad they got around to doing it. It's a very sort of bare bones sort of release. But to be honest with you, just owning it as a collection is good enough for me. And uh, it's basically the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, this is the series from, I believe is it 2002 or 2003. It's from the early 2000s. And in my opinion, this is the best interpretation of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I, of course, grew up with the 80s Turtles, but this, for me, sticks more closely to the original comics, but obviously does take elements from the original animated series as well. But I, I think, for me, this struck a much better balance between the sort of darker, edgier Turtles, uh, as well as the sort of very cartoony, uh, 80s series so I'm extremely happy that they finally put out the entire run in one box set because before the releases were very hard to come by and they were all like individually released and only in America which made it even more frustrating for me now granted this is an American release so this is a region one release uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it can be played in a uh, in a UK player I haven't actually tested it out yet but I have a, a region free player which is why I'm able to play this stuff but um, it is honestly for me the best interpretation of the turtles so I'm really happy to finally get this and uh, it wasn't that it wasn't expensive it was about 30 quid so that to me is just really worth getting so long time coming very very happy to get that so moving on I actually uh, went to a HMV shop I have not done that in God knows how long. Uh, all the HMVs uh, that are more or less near me have all shut down. They used There was a time where I lived, there was a HMV everywhere. But nowadays, uh, where I'm from in London, uh, not many. Uh, there is one that's relatively close to me. Um, but I seldom have to go down there for anything. So that's why I rarely ever go. But this time there was something I was looking for and uh, I didn't do a check online to see if they had it in stock yet. So I was just going there. I just said to myself, you know what? I've got to do some other bits in that part of town. So why not go down into the HMV and see if what I want is there. And fortunately enough, it was as well as a few other bits. So I, yeah, it was nice actually going into a shop and buying physical media in where I could actually see the shelves pick stuff out and purchase it at a till. Uh, I know that might not seem like much, but honestly, it's been so long since I've actually had to do that. So <laughs> it felt quite fun and unique and uh, yeah, it felt special. <laughs> but yeah, so I bought a bunch of Blu-rays here. Some really cool ones. So I'll just start with the one that I was initially going to pick up. And what I went to pick up was Jackie Chan Drunken Master 2. This is an amazing film. Um, so obviously it's the follow-up to Jackie Chan's classic Drunken Master. Uh, this film was made like 15 years later. This, this film was made in, I believe it was 1994 it came out. Compared to the original one, which I believe released in 1979. And it's an excellent follow-up. It's fantastic, awesome. Jackie Chan at his best. Just amazing martial arts, drunken style. But yeah, so this was an exclusive to HMV. And um, while I could have bought it online, no issue, I did want to sort of try and 
source it in person if I could. When I actually went to HMV, it was not in like it was not on the shelves. So I went behind, I went to the till and I asked the person if they had any in stock. And sure enough, they actually had them just behind the till. And the reason why he had them behind the till, and he said to me that uh, people kept stealing them. He said people kept stealing these, which actually made sense as to why I was seeing them on eBay at inflated prices. But yeah, so like they had them behind the till because they were planning to like put security tags on them. So I was relieved that they did have them in stock because I thought I didn't want to waste my journey. But yeah, this is a really awesome film. I actually already own this on Blu-ray, but I have like a, an American import, which is like bare bones, it's got nothing on it. So it was just nice to sort of get this um, one. This, I believe it comes with like a booklet as well. Yeah, awesome, awesome film. This is this is such a must have for any, any fans of action martial arts. This is a, such an awesome film. So obviously I picked that up, but I also picked up a bundle of other films that have been on my list for a very long time. There was actually a couple couple of movies I was also hoping was going to be there but before I get to that I also picked up uh, Wes Craven's Swamp Thing and uh, so yeah interesting story here well not interesting this could be a boring story but you know what I'm talking about <laughs> I grew up with the sequel to this film uh, which was I believe was the return of Swamp Thing and I really loved that film when I was a kid I really did I had it on VHS and I watched it a lot uh, it's a very cheesy film it is it's a very cheesy film um, but I enjoyed it as a kid. Uh, this one here, the original, which was directed by Wes Craven, is a much more serious film. Um, it's, it's from the uh, early 80s, and uh, I, I have to admit, I never really liked this film that much. Um, uh, the effects aren't as good as the sequel. Even though the sequel's cheesier, it does have, uh, in my opinion, much better practical effects. But this is still a decent enough uh, early 80s superhero-ish film. I think it's only let down by the some of the practical effects. They do look a little bit lame uh, by our standards, but like even by 80s standards, they weren't very good. And, I, and, I, and, I, and they were aware of that because by the time they got to the sequel, it was massively improved. But still, this is still one of those movies that for me is worth adding, especially since I have the second one. It just seems weird not to have the first. And uh, it's, a, it's a very fun, schlocky, you know, B-movie style action film. And uh, yeah, really tough to finally get it in the collection. And the two that I was after, and these were part of the uh, 2 for 15. And tough to get them because they've been on my list for a long, long time. And the first one I got here is The Gate. And this to me is just such an awesome film that I've watched ever since I was a kid. Always wanted to own it. And this essentially is a horror film. It's a kid's horror film. I'd kind of put it in in the same category as films like Gremlins and The Monster Squad. It's kind of like that where it's sort of like, it's it's excuse for a young audience, but it's still, you know, gory enough to appeal to adults. You know, this, like this is not, like you would never see a film aimed at kids like this today. That would never happen. This film is a little bit too gory even by like kids standards of today. But yeah, really, really fun film. Really enjoyed this one. So this was part of the two for 15. So I bundled it up with this film and I was so glad they had it as I've been meaning to watch it again. It's been a while. And that is Return of the Living Dead part three. And it's funny, right? I actually, I actually grew up watching the second film, part two. And I've seen the first, I've seen, I've seen all three of them, but like, I'd forgotten I'd actually seen this. I actually watched it one time. It was on Amazon Prime. And I said I was going to watch it, you know, for the first time, see what it was about. And then when I actually started watching the film, I realized that it's actually a film I'd seen before. I just, I didn't really remember it that much. But then when I started watching it and I started seeing certain scenes, I was like, yo, I have seen this film. At first, I took this film to be like a very budget B movie. But it's actually it's pretty decent. I mean, it is it is a B movie, but but it's but it's a lot more decent. The budget the budget is a lot better than I thought it would be. Really fun movie. I actually thought it was a very interesting take of, of for the Return of the Living Dead. They didn't just try to necessarily rehash the previous two films, which was uh, uh, greatly appreciated. Really really fun movie. So I'm glad to finally uh, add this one into my collection for the first time. And the last film I picked up at HMV, and this was basically just a, a, an impulse buy, so I'd already bought those other things. 
and I, I, they were on like sort of like the first floor and then on the ground floor you see all the typical sort of like more casual commercial stuff you know your, your pop figures your t-shirts posters etc etc and uh, and then like they had like a sort of like a little superhero section and then I saw this and for the price I just nabbed it because it was on my list but I was just waiting for it to drop on Amazon and uh, weirdly enough on Amazon they only have the steelbook of this and uh, I don't really want it to buy any steelbooks um, and I wanted the price to drop so when I saw this standard blu-ray case and they had dropped the price I just nabbed it straight away and that is uh, Justice League Justice League War World so this is the uh, part of the uh, DC animated series and uh, this was like an interesting film um, this, is, this is the latest release from the DC animated uh, catalogue uh, looks cool looks interesting uh, so I'm looking forward to, to giving this one a watch. One thing I've always enjoyed about these uh, animated films from DC is they tend to skew for an older audience. So, you know, they're quite violent, quite dark, and uh, I do appreciate that. So, yeah, glad to pick that one up. Okay, so moving on from that, uh, I've got one random here that I picked up on uh, eBay. And it's been a movie I've wanted to sort of add into my collection, but I sort of went back and forth on whether where I was going to pick it up or not. It's a superhero animated film, part of that DC animated uh, uh, catalogue. And this is called uh, uh, Freedom Fighters of the Ray. So this is basically based around the very obscure DC character known as the Ray. Uh, and this animated film is actually a spin-off from the sort of CW shows uh, that, that, that was on uh, a few years back so like stuff like the flash uh, legends of tomorrow arrow it was part of that sort of series and the character the ray he actually appeared in an episode of i believe it was legends of tomorrow uh in live action and uh, but he was sort of like from another another world an alternate earth and this film is sort of set in that alternate earth so it's technically a spin-off of uh, Legends of Tomorrow and The Flash, um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a it's a very cool film. It's a very cool post-apocalyptic superhero action film. Now the DVD can be bought here no problem, but the Blu-ray is a little bit tougher to track down as it it was uh, only released in the US, so I had to go to eBay for this one. But it was being sold by a seller on, on in the UK, so glad to add this one. And the next stack here is all Hong Kong action movies. Uh, I do love a bit of Hong Kong action flicks. Um, yeah, I've just been on a real like, um, just in a mood to, to watch some, not just stuff that I'd seen already as a kid, but also stuff that I'd never got around to watching. And uh, I've just been watching a lot of trailers, clips on YouTube and stuff, and stuff that just looks really interesting to me. So I've just been going on the hunt for like loads of loads of stuff. So first one, oh no, I just realized I'm, I'm skipping one film. Oh well, I'll show it in another video. But anyway, uh, I'm, I've been lately, I've been on a bit of a Cynthia Rothrock kick, uh, uh, pun intended. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so she was, she was a martial artist, actress in the 80s, um, American. And yet she appeared in loads of Hong Kong movies and she was amazing. I mean, I'd never seen a, a, a female Westerner keep up with the Hong Kong stunt team the way she did. And she was amazing. She had great screen presence and uh, she was uh, fun to watch back in the day. And she's still fairly active today. She still makes movies today. Uh, she's got her own YouTube channel as well. But it's also interesting hearing her interviews and her insights into that time period of her life when she was like you know making so many Hong Kong movies and I've got one here that I've never watched before I've I've seen it now since but never seen this one uh, as a kid ever and that is um, it was called uh, Lady Reporter also known as the Blonde Fury uh, this is a fantastic little movie I mean the story itself is nothing to write home about but some of the action set pieces, the martial arts fights in this one is fantastic. Honestly, some of the best. Uh, she's not the only Western in this film as well. There's a couple of guys in there who she fights. Awesome. Action is fantastic in this one. Really, really did enjoy it. It's a little bit overlong, I feel, for given what the story is. But 
but ultimately the, the fights is what makes this film worth watching and yeah i totally recommend checking this one out if you like your action martial arts cinema so yeah it's an awesome one and the next one i got here now again not cynthia rothrock but since i've been sort of checking out sort of what she's been up to it made me think about some of the other action females of that hong kong 80s era and this one looked really interesting to me i saw the trailer for this and it looked very intriguing it also has a, 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 an appearance by Sammo Hung, one of my favourite martial artists. And uh, this is apparently stars his wife. And the film is called uh, She Sh She Shoots Straight. And so basically this is sort of sent, this is very female centric action film. And from, from I've never seen it before. From This is actually a very recent pickup, so I've not had a chance to buy it yet. I think I only, only got Zen arrived there yesterday. But from the clips I've seen, it just looks fantastic. I think it's about, about it's like a, a female police officer. I think she has to like uh, infiltrate like this gang or some, something to that effect. But uh, this looks fantastic. The, the fighting looks mad. This looks great. That, that, what you'd expect from that 80s Hong Kong action. A lot of stunt work, just amazing stuff. And it's, um, like, it's, it's funny that she's just one of these actresses that never really blew up, even though she was very good at what she did. Um, but you know, she's, she married Sammo Hung, so yeah, amazing. So I look forward to checking this one out, because like I say, the actual trailer to this actually looks like, uh, the storyline looked very interesting, so looking forward to checking that one out. And sticking with female action, uh, this time starring a, a, a well-known actress, and that's Michelle Yeoh in uh, Royal Warriors. So essentially, this is basically a, a, a follow-up to Yes Madam, which was basically sort of her, her her starring role debut, which she also appeared alongside Cynthia Rothrock. But this one is basically her on her own. I've never seen this film before, you know, but seeing Michelle Yeoh in her prime, doing all the stunt work and martial arts, it's always an awesome watch. Like I loved her in Supercop, one of my favorite Jackie Chan movies that she appeared in. So I'm really looking forward to checking out Royal Warriors as well. There's another film that she made as well that I want to watch. I'm looking forward to picking that up. But yeah, so I'm really, I'm actually very excited to check this one out because I hear the storyline's pretty decent as well. And uh, moving away from the females, this one stars uh, Yuen Biu, and that is uh, Iceman Cometh. So this is the uh, collector's set. And again, this is one I've never seen before. Uh, even though I'm actually a big fan of Yen Biu, he was the uh, the third in the uh, Three Dragons trio made up of Sammo Hung and Jackie Chan. He would always find uh, Yen Biu with them as well. And uh, this film has been described to me as a Hong Kong version of Highlander, which I found very intriguing. So I'm looking forward to uh, checking this one out. So essentially, uh, Yun Biel plays like an immortal and it's sort of set in modern day but it does flash back to like his times and like as a sword fighter and stuff so like I say very Highlander and uh, it's a bit of a fish out of water storyline as well so I'm actually looking forward to checking this one out um, yeah it looks very very interesting very high concept so looking forward to that one and finally of the Hong Kong films I picked up here, this is more of a traditional Hong Kong film, and this is uh, Clan of the White Lotus. So this is more of that traditional uh, Kung Fu 70s era. Uh, I, I don't know if it's 70s or early 80s, I'm not too sure. But it stars uh, Gordon Liu of Kill Bill fame. Uh, you might remember he played uh, Pai Mei in the, in, the, in, the, in the Kill Bill films. And this film is actually about the Pi May character, which is actually why I wanted to pick it up. So really looking forward to watching this one again. Not one I've seen before. Do love that traditional uh, 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 Kung Fu. So yeah, looking forward to this one. And last bunch of films I've got here. So after I picked up Return of the Living Dead Part 3, I started to wonder if, I, if there was a, a Blu-ray version of the second film. And I realized that there was, but it was only released in the US by Scream Factory. And of course, it's uh, Return of the Living Dead Part 2. 
Now, I actually own this film on, on the DVD, but the reason why I wanted to get the Blu-ray, aside from the obvious improvements, was that I, I, I later found out that the original score of the film had been removed for the DVD release. So this, this release by Screen Factory brought back the original score. And I think that might have been why when I watched the DVD, I wasn't too sure. Something felt off about it, but I couldn't remember because the sec this second film I actually watched loads as a kid, as a little kid. And one thing I've always rated about the uh, Return of the Living Dead films is that the, the score in them, the, the music has been fantastic. Really enjoy the music in these films. So I'm glad that they restored the original music. And um, this was also got, being a Scream Factory release, it's also got some really nice extras as well. And many do consider this to be the weakest of the trilogy. Um, but I don't know, I, I really enjoy it. I really dig this one. Uh, a lot of people say it's shit, but I, I disagree. I, I think this one is a schlocky fun, very much a continuation. It's sort of like, it's not. It's a continuation, but it's not really because it, it does actually star two actors from the original film, but they're playing different characters. So um, it's sort of a loose sequel, but then the, these films, these the Return of the Living Dead films, while they are an offshoot of the original Night of the Living Dead, they're more of they're more comedic. They're not as serious as George Romero's movies, but they're still just a lot of fun to watch. And I know when I say comedic, people might take them as as kind of silly, which in some some instances they are. But it's I say silly in a fun way. It's, they're, they're fun movies, you know. They're still gory, still, you know, action horror, but it, it, it's just a, with a more of a uh, uh, um, comedic slant. And I'm very happy to finally get this. And I actually had to buy this. Uh, the cheapest available I saw of this was on Amazon US, which they were selling for twenty pounds. Because everywhere else I'd seen it was going for thirty-five. Uh, but I try to avoid buying buying stuff from Amazon US because they have the worst packaging. The way they send these things is just like the absolute worst and you basically have a 50-50 chance of it coming to you in one piece. Because I've had some awful experiences ordering individual Blu-rays from them because they always send them in these oversized bubble mailers and this was no different. This also got sent in an oversized bubble mailer but the price I felt it was worth the risk and fortunately it paid off no damage but i'm telling you it's a 50 50 chance i've had multiple items uh, arrive damaged before so yeah I w i'm always scared to order from them straight direct but uh fortunately enough it worked out so happy to finally get that one and here's a movie that um i picked up off ebay and it's a movie that i i, I wasn't initially ever planning to get on blu-ray because it was available to stream uh, on, on multiple platforms, but uh, one day I felt like watching it, and it just wasn't on any of the any of the uh, streaming services. So I looked it up on eBay, and it was actually a, ch a cheap copy. There was a, a brand new copy available on Amazon, but it was like going for ten pounds. I didn't really want to pay that much for it, so I went on eBay, bought a used copy. It cost me like three quid, and the the, the film I picked up is called uh, No Escape. And this is an action thriller starring Owen Wilson in a movie in a movie role he's not typically known for doing, uh, which was actually quite refreshing. Owen Wilson is mostly known for doing comedies, but this is very much an action thriller, and it's a it's a bit of a gem. This film is a bit of a gem, guys. This is basically he's so Owen Wilson is basically him and his family uh, travel to Thailand, I believe it is, and uh, he's sort of going there for for work. He's starting a new job there. And while they're there, uh, the, the country gets taken over by a rebel group. So there's like a coup. And uh, they're basically the, uh, taking down uh, Westerners. Because apparently he works for like some, some, um, some water company. And uh, they don't believe in for and foreigners coming in there and taking over their industries and whatnot. So they start murdering like Westerners in hotels and stuff. And it's like a mad panic. In the hotels, people are getting murdered, and it's basically a, a, a fight for survival. Him and his family are trying to get away, but all these people are getting killed around them, and they're just trying to get out of the country. It's a really, really tense film, really enjoyable movie, 
and I definitely recommend people uh, give it a watch. Uh, now going off on movies, we're going to go to the only anime I have here. And this is a very cool one based on an American comic, but it's a Japanese anime. And it's one I've wanted to watch for many years. And that is uh, Witchblade. So this is based on the American comic uh, from, I believe it was Top Cow. Uh, Witchblade is, is semi well known. Uh, probably not so much nowadays, but back in the early 2000s, late 90s, uh, Witchblade was, was quite well known. Interesting character about, about a female that gets this sort of alien sort of gauntlet, which sort of gives her this sort of suit and in turn gives her all these powers. And this is basically like an anime adaption, sort of set in Japan and whatnot. And uh, yeah, gory, violent, just awesome. And uh, yeah, really chuffed that this came out on the on the Blu-ray here in the UK, which is very rare for something something like this, like as obscure to, to get a, a UK release. So yeah, it was nice grabbing this while I could. And the next thing I bought, I actually bought this a while ago. I had to resort to eBay for this because it sort of went out of print. And this this is the box set of uh, the Lone Wolf and Cub series. So essentially, uh, if you don't know, if anyone's watched Shogun Assassin, that's basically what this is. Um, Shogun Assassin was essentially the first two films in the Lone Wolf and Cub series that had been edited together and dubbed. Most people have watched Shogun Assassin. This actually has all four films of the Lone Wolf and Cub series, as well as Shogun Assassin as well. So I'm really looking forward uh, to checking this out. I haven't watched it yet. I, I have watched uh, Shogun Assassin before. That's, that's very well known. But I've not actually seen all four films in their original format, in their original language. So looking forward to getting this. Uh, unfortunately, this is out of print now, so which is why I had to resort to eBay. But I managed to get it for about what it went for at, at retail. So it's held its value. But yeah, just chuffed to get it. And the final thing I picked up here, and this was actually thanks to Pedro from the VHS Bootleggers. He sent me a link to this because this is this was uh, exclusive to, it wasn't exclusive to HMV, but uh, HMV had a deal on it. And initially it was selling for 50 pounds, but uh, uh, Pedro from the VHS Bootleggers had managed to grab it for 30 quid off HMV. And they had it on, it, while it was listed as 50 pounds on their main store page, on their eBay page, it was listed at £30. So he sent me the link and I, link and I grabbed it right away. And it's a box set of, uh, of a bunch of one, two, three, five, five sort of um, B movies from like the 80s and early 90s. And to be honest, I only bought it for one movie in particular, which is just not available to buy individually. I had to buy the box set. But when I was doing more research into this, I started to look up some of the other films in this collection. And they actually do sound very interesting. So I'm actually really looking forward to checking out all the movies. So this is a release from Arrow and it's the, um, what's it called? It's the Arrow, it's called the, the Arrow Video, the Arrow Video Store series. And so essentially this is a, a, a collection of five movies uh one is called uh the dungeon master another one's called dolls then you've got cellar dweller then you have arena and then robot jocks now robot jocks is the movie that i wanted from this collection essentially robot jocks was a movie i watched as a kid it was the very first live action giant robot film I'd ever seen and I remember thinking it was so cool at the time of course nowadays with films like Pacific Rim you know it can easily be done with CGI but back then this was all done with stop motion and it was very cool and I really dug it it was set in like in the far future where nations solved their issues by having two giant mechs that were piloted by humans and they would solve their issues like that it's a very very cool film very cool sort of b-movie movie a uh, film uh, but some of these actually look quite good. Uh, from what I've read, uh, Arena sounded very interesting, uh, as well as Dolls. So I'm looking forward to checking this out. I was very lucky. Again, thank you very much, Pedro, man, uh, for giving me the link. 
managed to grab this for 30 quid. Although unfortunately, uh, it has since gone up to 50 quid on the eBay page as well. So that's a real shame, but I was very, very fortunate enough I was able to pick this up. Because um, yeah, like uh, Robot Jocks for me, is just one of those movies, again, I watched it as a kid and uh, just really adored it. So I'm happy to finally get it on Blu-ray with some nice uh, features as well. Again, this was a very recent pickup, so I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. So I'm looking forward to doing so at some point soon. And that is it guys, that's basically my Blu-rays and DVDs. I actually do have more stuff and I missed one out. Uh, I did miss out a, another Cynthia Rothrock movie, which is fantastic, but I'll probably show it up in, a, in another video. I've got a bunch of other stuff I'm still waiting to receive as well. So I'll probably make another, another Blu-ray pickups vid uh, much sooner than, uh, than, than expected. But in any way guys, thank you very much for watching. And of course I always appreciate uh, listening hearing your thoughts so please leave a comment below let me know what you guys think and of course leave me a thumbs up if you can it's always appreciated when people do that it does help me um, uh, immensely so again thank you guys for your time i really do appreciate you and uh, i will see you next time bye bye